questions? If any, any relating to this? Congresswoman, uh, Governor Walz's commissioners have responded to some of the concerns that you and others laid out in your letter to President Biden for keeping some of those concerns. Have you seen that? And has the governor done enough on this pressure? Look, we didn't write the letter to the governor. We wrote the letter to the president of the United States because we believe that it is the president that needs to intervene and stop this pipeline. The fact that the, the governor felt the need to respond um, shows us that we are moving the needle on this subject. We have been writing letters for at least yes. three, seven for many, um, on the need to intervene and stop the Line 3 pipeline and the fact that there is a coordinated effort to bully us uh, into minimizing um, what we have been advocating for and to stop us from engaging in the advocacy that we have engaged in um, tells us that we are getting close to shutting this pipeline down. Can you talk more about? Can you talk more about what I guess you are? It would look like if the president intervenes. Like you're asking, um, I heard some of you say, halt the pipeline. And given that construction is decently far along, um, are you hoping, I guess, that he orders them to completely abandon the project, or what? What I guess would be next? We're asking for the um, permit to be revoked, and that would shut it down. Have you gotten any indication? They have been looking into it. We have been in constant conversation um, with the president and the administration, um, and we will continue to push until they say yes to our demand. Why do you think there's reluctance on the part of the administration to shut this down, whereas the case moving forward to shut down uh, construction? I haven't uh, noticed uh, reluctance. Um, I think it's a level of importance, and as we have been um, saying, and you've heard probably from the water protectors, uh, the voices of indigenous people are often not prioritized. Their needs um, and their sovereignty is not prioritized. And the reason that we are here, the reason I went in, in February, the reason we continue um, to advocate uh, and, and bring awareness is because we want this issue to be elevated and for it to become important enough for the president to take action as we have done um, on Tuesday. Your colleague in the U.S. House, Representative Stauber, uh, had a press conference last night. He made a point to a question for a few of the other representatives up here. There was a lot of talk of they're not from here, they're not from Minnesota, why are they speaking on their hills? I know Representative Bush touched on it a little bit, but if you could give some more comments. All right, so here's what I will say. You know, they say um, money talks and bullshit walks um, <laughs> and preaches donations uh, to my colleague is working for them. Um, he is out here uh, advocating for them and not advocating for his constituents and the people of Minnesota who are going to um, suffer the consequences of the pollution that Enbridge is creating and has already created. He's not advocating and standing in solidarity with our indigenous brothers and sisters. He is not being a good federal representative in protecting treaty rights, which is what he is supposed to do in the oath that he took. And finally, I will say it's actually kind of surprising to hear someone like Pete talk about workers when he has not, uh, when he has voted against the PRO Act, when he has voted against raising the minimum wage, when he is for a right to work um, advocate, when he has done zero in advocating for workers in his track record to come at someone like me who has been a pro labor, a former labor member, advocates of working class people in this country um, with his statements and his little press conference. The truth <laughs> is that I am sick and tired of people who continue to challenge us when we stand up for the most marginalized people in this country. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. People cares. If people like Pete and others who have 
push back against our advocate advocacy for indigenous people truly cared they would be standing here with us mm. standing in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in the indigenous community they would be standing with us against looters they would be celebrating the work that we do every single day on behalf of the most, mon most marginalized people of this state and across this country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sabar also brought up, ask them how they're traveling this weekend. What modes of transportation are they going to we're, we're going to be crawling. How about that? <laughs> given given a question? representative, given the pretext that what you are all describing is a a cultural war, a spiritual battle. Indigenous sovereignty is linked with George Floyd. This city, George, indigenous sovereignty. We recognized Americans' right to have any legitimacy or claim to even exist in our homeland. It's tied to the ban on the entire Muslim faith flying into our country. It's it's tied to the Zionist instigation of the Nakba, which for my people, we were removed from this territory in 1862. So I know you are all walking a very fine line within the Democratic Party. And I would like to know how you are uh, willing to, your willingness to come here means that you're willing to compel our colleagues there who sometimes have to be pushed and prodded into progressive stances. And I'm, I'm speaking about Gina McCarthy, speaking about sister Peggy Flanagan. There's only so much that real progressive people can do within the DNC. So how is that fight or struggle going for you all? The fight and the struggle continues. I'm sure my, my sisters can add to this. Um, what, what we are able to do is to stand on our principles. Uh, continue to advocate for those who have entrusted their votes and voices onto us to be a voice for them um, in rooms where decisions are being made about them without them. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to do that. I can't speak for why others haven't stood up for those that have believed in them, that have invested in them, and the people that they said that they were going to fight for. But what I can speak to is that you are never going to experience that with me and those that stand here with me today. And with that, thank 